Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel for another vital tutorial. In this video I'm going to talk about how to make wave tables out of audio samples and in particular vocal samples which are kind of nice for making weird robotic voices and well not exclusively vocal samples of course. This will be the first of a series of three videos in which I'm going to cover all ways I can think of of making wavetables with Vital, all, you know, all the ways I know, I mean, using all the features of the wavetable editor and the resynthesis option. So, let's get going. So here we are with our friendly interface, and it's, you know, the usual thing you've seen a dozen times, if not more. And what are we going to do with it? Uh, we're going to make wavetables. Here, for example, I can make uh, I can make an audio sample. Let's say I have this channel I have prepared for this, and I'm going to say something robotic in my microphone. Something like, kiss my shiny metal ass. Then, let me get rid of the synth for a second. Then I have this sample. I'm going to crop it, because really I have no use of all the rest and say i don't know how long this is probably all my s which is gonna get it's got a lot long s i'm gonna crop it yes stop the audio it's gonna change a lot of things and then i'm gonna grab this sample drop it here in the vocode option and uh, now if i just get us get an lfo let's make it a ramp lfo on my Wave table position. If my shiny metal ass, 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 if my shine. I have this effect. And this is it. If we go in the intimacy of our wave table, we see that here we have our sample. And, uh, you know, I can actually, I could cut this thing a little shorter if I wanted to make this thing a little more precise. But it's really not that critical. I think it kind of works already. Now, uh, this is one way of doing it, and you can do it's it with lots of possible shiny metal with lots of possible wavetables, lots of audio material. But you can also use the text to wavetable option, which is uh, one thing which was advertised a lot when Vital came out. And again, and I will have a thing which will do kiss my shiny metal ass basically the same thing with a different voice now uh, I have to say I'm not really enthusiastic about the text to wave table option not because I think it's useless I mean and yeah it does have its use but you see what I have here is <clears throat> an audio sample I mean what is what this thing is actually doing is getting my text sending it to an uh, offline to an uh, to a service which is not not local you know it's not doing it inside vital engine it's doing it in remotely you need to be connected to the internet for this to work and you know it will use some uh, text to speech algorithm to make my wavetable and then it's I mean, not it doesn't really make my wavetable it just makes a sample saying that thing with a voice you can change the the accent you can change the the type of um, the, the way the language in which the text is being re is being read but in reality you could use any any text to speech algorithm and there's lots of those online and, you know f to to have your samples and then import them in vital so if you, even if you have the free version and you have no possibility of make, you can't make unlimited use of this, that's not going to stop you into making, I don't know, your, your, your wave, inputting a whole book in wave tables in, uh, in text because you, you're not forced to this thing. You know, this is just a sample. It's not turning it into a wave table over which we have more control than the ones we've just made dropping a piece of audio into it. Now... <clears throat> If you are using a wavetable made like this, this thing here, vocode and formal scale, are probably going to be your best friends. Because Kiss you hear, if I turn this low, ass. it shifts the formal. Kiss my shiny metal ass. Kiss my shiny metal Making it ass. more manly in the, this Kiss direction and more kind of, you know, chip monkey, gremlinish this other way. And uh, one thing, one way you can make good use of this is also using a keyboard tracking in and do some negative modulation on this. What is the reason Kiss for this? The fact that, you know, this ass. way you will get that 
it will make sense along in mo on most of your keyboard. You see here, here I'm Just at the bottom here somewhere, you know, in the middle. And even better if you use this formant scale, which is very similar to vocoder. I mean, I say very similar, this is just what my ears tell me. I mean, there's no way of knowing. I mean, if you look at what the spectrum thing does, you might actually get some information, but it really seems to just shift the formants in different ways, just with different ranges. So if I do it the just format like scale, you see, it makes a it kind of makes sense up here too. If I remove this, it would start getting completely unintelligible. Let me just say. See, this doesn't make sense anymore. If I get back to this. Arm so you still get a little sense of what I, what was being said, which I think is kind of nice. Now, of course, you can scan this linearly. You can scan it in reverse and have it the voice of a um, of a satanic robot speaking in reverse you can have it go back and forth saying you know making it triangular and you can open it in stereo to have to make it less intelligible but still so somehow somehow interesting you can use then all the features you have on your synth you know we can use some unison we can we can use this other effect i mean one thing i find really really interesting to do is like uh, say i want here a simple sine wave and then do some fm or ring modulation on it you can also do some real fm as you probably know if you've seen my videos my other videos but i think if you go do go go for this phase modulation is phase modulation is going to be quite good see this one And yeah. I mean, I find if you are into robotic synthetic voices, there's lots of things to do with this. You can decide where you want it, how you want it. There's lot there's this formant too. Which you could expect to do some, you know, some, to do do to do some good work, but maybe even not necessarily to. Now, uh, this is of course not all you can do. As I was saying, you can use other pieces of audio material. For example, here I have the library from Isotope Iris, which is one of an interesting source of the source of um, not only that, there's actually some other audio. Yeah, another thing you can do, of course, is getting actual wavetables and import them. You know, if you get a wavetable, something which is already a wavetable, and you just drop it here into wavetable, you just get a wavetable. This is, this is it. And you can do the same thing with the wavetables from, you know, the for example, the serum folder. Here I have serum preset uh, wavetables, tables here. Yep. Let's say I get one uh, one of these vowel wavetables from Serum, and I just drop it in here as wavetable. Let me remove this form and scale, sorry. And I will have that, and I can use all of these, and there's a bunch of synths which already are full of wavetables in this very... in this exact format. There's plenty, really. I mean, even just, even the more recent... Uh, and also free, just like Vital Graphite, which I recently tried. You know, you've got quite a library of wavetables. You can find online wavetables from Massive, from the PPG, as I have here. There's 
plenty. I mean, there's really, it really is up to you. There's plenty of material to choose from. Now, for example, though, I can go and get a synthesizer from this library here. There's this Andromeda and say, hey, I like this analog bells. I'm going to drop it here into pitch splice, which and because now I want it to guess a pitch and make sense of it. And And now it is just scanning linearly my sample. And now we're going to get into the editing here. This window size is something which, of course, of course, determines the size of, uh, you know, how wide every, you know, the window that determines the, the size of a single cycle of a wave is. And that is quite important. Now it's guessing what the right one is, according to, I don't know, I don't know how it got it. Actually, this, I can tell you, sounds quite a lot like the original sound, but you can make it sound very different and, you know, make things with the same shape happen at radically different frequencies. Say, for example, I turn this to 300. It's not going to probably sound as good and nice as it does, but, but it's definitely sounding different. If I go even lower, if I go higher, it will get, you know, a lot higher in pitch. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot more high, high frequencies and you might not, not like it too much. And then, for example, here I have this sample. I can decide up to what point I want to scan the wave table. Say I just like the attack. I just like this part. Just the big, this beginning. Now, of course, there's this abrupt, drastic thing at the end, which you can, you know, a lot of wave tables do. And this is, uh, you know, this this is a wave, and you can make you can mess this around in lots of ways. Again, let me get back. To See the original. I was already with the unison because I had done it. I mean, and you can do it with lots of different sounds. You can get other other pieces of synth. Some things sound better, some not so good. For some others, you might it might help to think and to tinker properly about the window size because in all likelihood there's going to be a right one and uh, just others aren't as nice. Now I can get I don't know something out of um out of this Moog modular, for example. There is this. Uh, bass long long bass note from a moog modular and uh, this is it's not really that long doesn't sound doesn't doesn't seem to be that long say for example i just want the very beginning of this yeah, the window size is very big to tell a very specific point and then i'm gonna get i'd say for example down from there to here from here to there and and it is definitely quite a sound dirty and analogish as you would expect from its source and then you can you know you just you, now you have it in your oscillator and in a bunch of different position not a lot of change really here I need to really move this thing somewhere else further ahead um, and there's lots of others like this i mean there's a plant plenty of sense here i can steal things from this euro rack modular what this three layer dark and stormy no idea how this sounds not really great not really what i was looking for there was i mean it's really it's really gone you know you can spend a lot of time thinking of what you want to do how you want to do it there's in endless amount of possibilities and well have fun i mean really there's a, like say for example from this thing here i can get this as you see one strings this sync for example let's see how this sync goes. Now I got to, that thing was a little, that thing was a little too short. I don't know why it's not really working how I meant. Let me get it here in pitch splice. And here it is. And now, for example, on this one too, I can change. I can say, no, I just want the beginning of it. And I could mess the window size. 
on this thing is thing is probably gonna be nicer than it was on others and yep enjoy this is just the start i mean you can make uh, wave tables with this and then you can use uh, a lot of other features you can use the modifiers and then you can go to the filters and then you can do all you know all the audio rate modulations uh, vital offers you you can go for the effects and then control all your modulations through the matrix and make incredibly complex sounds just starting out of something and making it completely unrecognizable i find this to be so fascinating i really love it and yeah this is it basically so, uh, once this is done, I have to say just thank you for the attention for following me this long, even though not as long as usual. Here there is a subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Maybe I'm saying this too often, there's someone who actually is unsubscribing to my, from my channel because I'm making too much self-promotion at the end. Anyway, if this guy is still watching my videos, thank you, because really, I mean, if you went to the point of seeing me say this thing, so many things to get annoyed, you were are, you are really a great, great fan. Too bad to have lost you. Uh, now, uh, and also you can check in the description, there's a bunch of links. There's Deep Tons Production, which you've seen the jingle earlier on. We offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring and a lot of other professional audio services. And there's also a link to my Gumroad where you can find some patches for Vital and for some other synths and maybe some wavetables too. This said, I'll see you at the next video where I'm going to talk about the editor and uh, the modifiers inside the wavetable editor, which are uh, quite another interesting, I wouldn't say a can of worms, because, you know, worms aren't that delicious or juicy, but they're quite a thing. There's a lot of uh, things to, to explore into those. Until then, bye.